listening to the Tiny Vet Podcast with me, Dr. Nicole Sue. I have been an exotics vet for seven years and my fiance, Hello. Des Watts, um, trained um, neuroscientist, trained yeah. statistician, failed neuroscientist, currently comedian. Hello. <laughs> And um, today we are going to be talking about antibiotic misconceptions, which I think is a topic that's probably really close to both of our hearts. And yeah, because I have an infection in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm dying, by the way. I, I meant to tell you before. He's the got podcast. endocarditis. <laughs> um, and I know what that is. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's something that really grinds my gears because a lot of people use it as a synonym for medicine. And it's so out there that, that that's that's so far from being correct um and what antibiotics actually are they're a very specific type of medication um that kills bacteria or prevents its growth yes i was gonna say bam i got, studied microbiology you got son. bactericidal you got bacteriostatic <laughs> and some antibiotics are only bactericidal at certain doses but actually, that's really important because you know how when you go to the doctor, they're like, all right, you have to finish this course of antibiotics, um, even if you feel better or you're 100%. Um, and one of, the, one of the reasons for that um, is antibiotic resistance. Sure. Another reason for that Which is Which is what? <laughs> ha! So... Explain that. Antibiotic resistance, basically, it's just like Darwin's survival of the fittest, but on this like microscopic scale. So when you first give an antibiotic to any human or animal, you're going to kill off, let's say, 90% of the population. This is just numbers I'm plucking out. I'm not directly quoting this one, but you're going to kill a large proportion of them. And then with each subsequent dose, of, you kill... Uh, not the people. The, yeah, the bacteria. The, the bacteria. Sorry. <laughs> um, the animals and people are supposed when to be give, alive. When you first give antibiotics, at, at this you point in time. commit a genocide against <laughs> human beings. <laughs> Against bacteria. <laughs> Just bacteria. Um, and let's say you stop the antibiotic course like in five days as opposed to the seven days. And what you have left with are like the 1% of the bacteria that have just been lucky and are genetically more prone to beating this antibiotic. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is that they multiply and then they spread those antibiotic beating genes to their little bacteria offspring. And that's how you get antibiotic resistance. Mm -hmm. And that's also another reason why, and a lot of people get quite upset about this, is, oh, my vet just won't give me antibiotics. Um, because, one, if you haven't seen your pet, it may not need antibiotics. Antibiotics... Could be a virus. Could be a virus, in which case antibiotics are completely useless. However, that to be said, sometimes you will prescribe antibiotics for viral infection when you have a secondary bacterial infection. Mm -hmm. So that's something, but you've got, still got to see the animal for it. It could be a fungal infection, in which case it's completely useless to give antibiotics. Mm -hmm. um, and antibiotics can have actually pre pretty serious side effects. Hey, Nicole, have you ever had a fungal infection? Yes, I have, actually. What in, what infection did you have several weeks ago and gave to it me? It was dermatophytosis, and it's very common within the veterinary industry. Okay. What's another term for that? Ringworm. Yes. I got ringworm. Dear listener. It's because... This goddamn dirty <laughs> veterinarian gave me ringworm it's three weeks ago. It's very common. All vets will get it at some point in their careers, and I actually got it because I was holding two wet horses with the ferry the other day. Fun fact, uh, also most comedians get ringworm, but that's, that's a whole separate thing. <laughs> it's because they live on the street, uh, but it's gross and you're gross. And I got uh, please one continue with antibiotic tiny talking. one centimeter by one I just had to get lesion. that off my chest just the way I had to get and the infection it resolved, off. And he only got one very mild lesion on his tum-tum that resolved really quickly I as well. Want, but I don't want worms. But anyway, they're not worms. But for a fungal infection like ringworm, antibiotics completely useless. And the other thing, they can have actually really serious side effects. Like, it's not completely innocuous. Like, there are antibiotics that can make you throw up. There's antibiotics that can make you, like, sensitive to light, make your skin burn. Um, it's always a judgment call where, or as a vet or as a human doctor, um, we've got to go, all right, what are the pros and cons of prescribing this medication to a patient? And if the cons outweigh the pros, hey, we might need to find another way. And prescribing antibiotics to a pet that you've never seen that may not even have a bacterial infection. Like, the cons are so enormous compared to the pros. Uh, that's why we're not going to do it. And it's not because, oh, we know we need to make the money from seeing the consultation. It's because we want to make sure that that's actually 
what your pet needs. <sighs> She's pretty worked up. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a really it's a really annoying thing for me because of that misconception. Like I think it's I think it's true amongst you know humans as well. It's not just yeah. People, it's not just oh, people the doctor have, wouldn't give me antibiotics. Yeah, it's not just people who have uh, yeah, you no, know, no, no, uh, pets. pets. Um, um, my like my brother, very smart yeah, guy. Yeah, he's a he's, he's school a teacher. He's a school teacher, and uh, yeah, he had a similar thing uh, like a few years back where you know he was very sick. He went to the doctor. The doctor did mm. not give him antibiotics because it was viral. Um, but he didn't understand. He didn't have the background to understand yeah. why the doctor didn't give him antibiotic, and he was complaining to me. Oh man, this doctor didn't do his job. I just went to get antibiotics. It's like, well, not only is that not gonna fix this particular problem, but also it's like the more people who take antibiotics, especially unnecessarily, mm. the more like uh, drug resistant strains will be in the oh, po- in the world. Absolutely, and know, like- they are so common now. Like we sure. had. Um, MRSA, which is like a really, really What's nasty it? strain of m- m- methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Right, I'm glad you are here. You're welcome. <laughs> um, who is a real doctor now? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we actually had um, a concern with that in our own hospital um, for animals. So mm-hmm. that's how widespread this problem is. Mm-hmm. So if there's anything you take away from you know this five minutes with us is that antibiotics are not the solution for everything, and the use is actually should be actually very tightly controlled. And vets have worms. The Tiny Vet Podcast is brought to you by Upilio. Sources for our topics can be found at upilio.io. Outro music by Matt Charleston.